people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. There appears to be trouble in paradise at 154 pounds as Bakrab Murtazaliev's legal team challenged WBO claim that Charlo vs. Zoo is next. Jamel Charlo's next fight will be a mandatory title defense against which mandatory is currently matter for the sanctioning bodies to resolve amongst themselves. As previously reported by BoxingScene.com, WBO President Francisco Paco Vericel announced over the weekend that a deal was reached for Chirlo to face WBO junior middleweight mandatory challenger Tim Zhu, thus avoiding a purse bid hearing that would have been scheduled later this month. This might be a blessing in disguise for Tim Zhu because I don't think he's ready for that fight. I've said as much more than once. The worst thing that could happen for Tim is he actually gets Jermel in the ring. I don't think he has enough experience for that fight. The WBO ruling is now being challenged by representatives for Bakram Murtazaliev, the longtime IBF mandatory challenger who was believed to be next in line for the undisputed junior middleweight championship. There exists a contract for Jermel Chirlo to fight against Bakram Murtazaliev, and it appears that the WBO is interfering with that contract and with the prospective economic advantage of Bakram Murtazaliev. Pat English, lead counsel to Murtazaliev's promoter, main events, noted to the WBO and all involved parties in a legal letter, a copy of which was obtained by BoxingScene.com in order that there be no dispute regarding the Charlo versus Castaño rematch. Certain promises were made in writing by both Jermel Charlo and and TGB promotions. TGB, that's Tom Brown. Charlo agreed that he had 10 days to either relinquish that title or he would proceed to fight Bakram, who is the IBF mandatory challenger. Mr. Charlo did not relinquish the IBF title and plans have been proceeding for that match. Indeed, there is a contract and a substantial sum of money in my trust account for the fight. An acknowledgement letter signed by Charlo on January 24th specified, with a win over Castaño, that he would have 10 business days to decide whether whether to vacate the IBF 154 pound title or next engage in my mandatory against Bakram Murtazaliev. If notice of my decision is not provided within said 10 business day period, I shall defend my IBF title against Murtazaliev in my next bout. I shall make no further applications after the Castaño bout to the IBF to extend my mandatory bout or to fight anyone other than Murtazaliev. I feel like it was up to the IBF to sort this out. Independent of whatever Jermel agreed to or didn't agree to with his mandatory challenger by way of the WBO, it's the IBF's job to ensure that Bakram Murtazaliev doesn't end up on the back burner. It's been just short of a month since the Castaño fight. It's well over the 10 business days specified in their initial agreement. Murtazaliev became the IBF mandatory challenger following a 12 round win over Jorge Fortea in November of 2019. The pandemic altered plans for an immediate shot at the title, which was held at the time by Julian Williams, who in turn lost the WBA and IBF titles to Jason Rosario. Charlo and Rosario entered a WBC-WBA IBF unification bout on September 26, 2020, which featured Merchizaliev in a non-televised undercard bout as part of an agreement to allow the three-belt unification fight to take place. Merchizaliev again appeared on a Charlo undercard, this time ahead of Charlo's first fight with Castaño, which ended in a split decision draw last July 17th in San Antonio, Texas. The failure to produce a winner left Murtazaliev in a position whether to decide on forcing his mandatory? Look, it's a cut and dry affair. Murtazaliev's been the IBF's mandatory long before Tim Zhu became the WBO's mandatory. He's been the mandatory challenger by way of the red belt since November of 2019, and that way he's literally been the mandatory challenger for the IBF for the last two years. Zoo and No Limit Boxing, his local promoter in Australia, entered a multi-fight agreement with the PBC earlier this year. His debut was to come on the undercard of the originally scheduled March 19th rematch between Castaño and Charlo. The event was postponed by two months when Castaño suffered an injury in training camp, which 
thanks to a filed protest by Zuna's team, required his responding to a WBO show cause letter just to retain the title and keep the rematch intact with Charlo. A new date was granted, both for that fight as well as Zoo's U.S. debut, which came as the March 26th Showtime main event. Zoo was also ringside for Charlo's win over Castaño, after which he insisted that Charlo had 120 days to either fight him or vacate the title. The threat came at a time when Charlo was already committed in writing to next face Murtazaliev, as argued by Murtazaliev's legal team. It's a simple matter, really. If Pat English has it in writing that Jermel agreed to face Bakram Murtazaliev immediately after the Castaño rematch, if he's got that in writing, it's a slam dunk and it's a done deal. And whatever he agreed to after that, whatever he agreed to with Tim Zhu, the agreement with Bakram Murtazaliev predates all of that. As does Bakram Murtazaliev's mandatory status. He's been the IBF's mandatory challenger for two years. He's been the IBF's mandatory challenger before Tim Zhu became the WBO mandatory challenger. Tim Zhu didn't become the WBO's mandatory challenger until last summer. Not formally. Bakram became the mandatory in the IBF following his November 2nd, 2019 fight with Jorge Fortea two and a half years ago. English reminded the room. Tim Zhu first shows up in the WBO's rankings in September of 2019 at number 12 after defeating Dwight Ritchie, who was not ranked. In July of 2020, Zhu was ranked at number 9. In August of 2020, he moved up to number two after defeating Jeff Horn, who was ranked at number five in the July 2020 rankings. Zoo first appears at number one in January of 2021 after defeating Bowen Morgan, who is not ranked. The next time Zoo fights a ranked fighter is 11-21 after he defeats Takeshi Inui. That's when he earned his mandatory. This is two years after Bakram. It's clear as day. Bakram Murtazaliev is next. His mandatory takes precedence. He was already mandatory by way of the IBF before Tim became mandatory by way of the WBO. And it seems that it's the WBO conflating things and causing confusion because they're supposed to honor this rotation process. They're supposed to be working in tandem with the other alphabet organizations. And this is why I thought that Jermel would end up moving up shortly after becoming undisputed champion. Not because he was afraid of anybody or because he was trying to run away from a fight, but because he has a proliferation of mandatory challengers waiting for him. He's got Mertz Aliyev by way of the IBF, Tim Zhu by way of the WBO, Sebastian Fundoria by way of the WBC, and who knows what the WBA's got waiting for him. Pat English finished off by saying, Given that there is an existing contract and that in any case, Bakram Murtazaliev is next in the mandatory line, we feel we must send this letter respectfully but firmly, demanding that Bakram Murtazaliev's rights and those of main events not be interfered with. We do not like to threaten, but all receiving this letter should be assured that those rights will be protected. Tim Zhu seems to want his title shot now, and the WBO has helped him jump the gun. You know, maybe Tim and the people at No Limit, they don't know what the hell's going on over there with the IBF because they're not on that route. It's not their job to know, but it is the WBO's job. Because of the established order, because of the rotation of mandatories, they're supposed to know. This could work out two ways. The WBO can decide to stand down with their mandatory order, and Tim, Tim will just have to wait. Or they can say, fuck it! Fuck the IBF. Fuck the established order. And fuck Bakram Murtazaliev and whatever the fuck he wants. You've got to satisfy our mandatory. And if you don't, we're going to strip you. And, you know, we'll just see what they decide to do. We'll see if they decide to take a more peaceful approach or if they decide to be hardliners and play hardball. But what's not up for debate is that Murtazaliev was already mandatory by way of the IBF before Tim was mandatory by way of the WBO. Based on that, we'll see what happens next. What happens next by way of the WBO? By way of the IBF, I don't think any more step-aside agreements can be arranged when this guy has essentially been stepping aside for like... He's been stepping aside for two and a half years. I have no doubts that the title changing hands has a lot to do with that. You have to remember, he became the mandatory challenger at a time when Julian Williams had the belt. The belt changed hands from Julian Williams to Jason Rosario and Jason Rosario to Jermel Charlo. Julian won the belt from Jarrett Hurd in May of 2019. The red belt. That same year in November, Bakram Murtazaliev became his mandatory challenger. The following year, following month, 
Julian lost the belt to Jason Rosario. By all rights, it should have been Bakram Mertesaliev that Julian fought in January of 2020. Not Jason Rosario. Jason wasn't as mandatory. Bakram was, and that's who he should have fought. But he ended up fighting Jason and lost the belts to him, at which point Jason lost the belts to Jermel. Won the belts from Julian in January of 2020 and lost them to Jermel in September that same year. The following year, all the way in August, that's when Jermel ended up fighting Brian Fon Disputus. Seven months into the year of 2021. Seven months! Bear in mind, that was the only fight that Jermel Charlo had that whole year. The Castaño fight of 2021. The rematch with Brian took place almost a year later, in May of this year. That's how long it took to put that together in the whole time. Bakram Mertesaliev has been waiting, so it's safe to say that yes. Yeah. I understand the plight of Bakram Mertesaliev, and I do believe that the IBF, at least partially, is to blame. He must have agreed to a... He's at least partially to blame himself because he agreed to step aside all those times. He's waited long enough and now he wants his shot. This might end with Jermel Charlo vacating at least one of those alphabet titles. Either the WBO or the IBF might end with him being stripped of one of them. I'm just surprised the IBF haven't acted sooner. If there's been no IBF mandatory satisfied for the last two years and Jermel Charlo agreed to enter into negotiations with Bakram Mertesaliev 10 days after the Castaño rematch. He must have, because he hasn't been stripped by the IBF. Has he been talking to both teams simultaneously? Both the Bakram Mertesaliev people and the Tim Zhu people? Is that why he hasn't been stripped of either title yet? Something's gotta give. The way I see it, in an ideal world, it would be Bakram Mertesaliev he has to satisfy next as a mandatory because Bakram was already the IBF's mandatory challenger long before Tim Zhu became the WBO's mandatory challenger. In an ideal world, that's how the cookie would crumble, though things are seldom ever ideal in the world of boxing. And we'll see what shakes out with this, because like I said... Unless the WBO decides to stand down. Stay their order for Jermel Trello to satisfy Tim Zhu as a mandatory challenger. Unless they stand down and rescind that order, it looks like he might have to vacate at least one of those alphabet titles. In men's heavyweight news, a story that was announced a few days ago that I didn't get the chance to talk about, Huey Fury will be facing Michael Hunter on the Sky Sports platform by way of boxer. An interesting fight on paper, though if you're familiar with the both of these fighters, you'll know that it depends on which version of these fighters shows up. It depends on which version of Huey Fury decides to enter the squared circle July 2nd. It depends on which version of Michael Hunter. Michael's coming off a draw with journeyman Jerry Forrest. The rematch which took place on Treller. Their initial meeting approximately eight years ago in 2014, Michael Hunter won a decision over Jerry Forrest, only so that eight years later, he would languish with him, an indicator that Michael Hunter, since joining the Triller platform, he has regressed. He wanted to cruise on Easy Street when he went over there. He had the opportunity to fight Philippe Hergovic in what was an IBF final eliminator for a mandatory position, and he chose to go another route, chose to cross over to the Triller side of things. Knocked off one of two steps. Made some easy money, and he found himself so confronted with his old buddy Jerry Forrest in December of last year and stunk out the place didn't look himself. That's the same Jerry Forrest that Kubrat Pulev beat easy not that long ago. You're going life or death with a guy that an aging Kubrat Pulev who's in his 40s handled easy. So what does that say? Yeah, I think that's an indicator that Michael Hunter has regressed and he needs to get it together ahead of this fight. According to Michael Hunter, he's got a multi-fight deal, multi-fight situation with the people over there at Sky and Boxer who seem to be fattening up their stable of fighters, particular to this conversation, their stable of heavyweights. They've got Huey Fury. Apparently, they've got Michael Hunter for at least three fights. We know that this past weekend, it was announced. Former WBO heavyweight champion, Joseph Park he just entered a long-term deal with them. That's where he's going to be boxing from here on out. And I see the strategy. In the absence of Matchroom, who they are no longer doing business with, Sky wants to populate their stable of fighters with some familiar faces that their audience, their viewers at Sky, have seen before. They are familiar with Huey Fury. They are familiar with Joseph Parker. To some extent, they might even be familiar with Michael Hunter. Yeah, they need to beef up their stable, especially now 
now that Anthony Joshua has gone all in with DAZN. The fight between Huey Fury and Michael Hunter is set to go down in approximately three weeks' time. And on paper, it's a good little fight, interesting little fight, though if you're familiar with the fighters and how they've been looking, respectively, and their tendencies, you know that it's a fight that can either be a good, solid fight or it's a fight that could turn out to be a stinker if the Huey Fury that fought Joseph Parker shows up or if the Michael Hunter that fought Jerry Forrest shows up. We'll see how it plays out. As far as Joseph Parker's surprise move, his migration from matchroom over to Sky and Boxer. Well, I, I will say it took me by surprise, though it's confirmation of something I already felt, something I was already thinking. What could Frank Warren and BT Sport have offered Joseph Parker to take on Joe Joyce that Matchroom didn't offer him to take on Philippe Pergovic. It just didn't make sense. The risks associated with the both of those fights were just about the same. Those were both very risky fights. I found it hard to believe that Frank Warren could have offered Joseph Parker more money to take on Joe Joyce than what he was offered to take on Philippe Pergovic. Just didn't make sense. This does. If you want any indication of what Joseph Parker really thought about the money on the table for a Joe Joyce fight, his move to Sky Sports says it all. If the money were that good, he would have followed through. He would have went ahead with that fight, but he didn't. He decided to jump into bed with Sky Sports and Boxer in what's reported to be a long term deal. He killed the fight. He's dead, at least for now. With Joe Joyce boxing under the Queensbury Promotions platform by way of BT Sport, and Joseph Parker boxing under the Boxer banner by way of Sky Sports, there are political boundary lines there that will prevent those two boys from fighting. Is this a duck? It very much looks like one. This is a byproduct of a market over there in the United Kingdom that has become more competitive since Matchroom parted ways with Sky. Sky's not bowing out of boxing. They're determined to carve out a lane of their own, even without Eddie Hearn and Matchroom there to produce content. They're beefing up their stable of fighters and they've brought Joseph Parker into the fray. For better or worse, and I can only deduce that with Huey Fury and Michael Hunter locking horns next month, early next month in July, the winner of that fight, depending on who it is, let's say it's Michael Hunter. Well, Michael Hunter might end up fighting Joseph Parker. Now, if Huey upsets the apple cart for Michael, I don't think very many fight fans out there want to see a rematch between Joseph and Huey. That was honestly one of the most awful heavyweight fights I've ever seen. But is it safe to say that Joseph ducked the Joe Joyce fight? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that. I think that Frank Warren became overexcited, jumped the gun, and announced a fight that wasn't done on paper yet. He announced Parker versus Joyce as if it was a done deal, and it wasn't. And we know that it wasn't because Joseph went the other way. If he actually were under contract to fight Joe Joyce, he wouldn't have had the legal liberty to do that. He bailed on Philippe Pergovic in an IBF final eliminator. He bailed on Joe Joyce in what would have been, in all likelihood, a WBL final eliminator. And you get the sense that what Joseph Parker wants to do is cruise on easy street. He can't have aspirations of fighting for a world title when he's bailed on two separate eliminators by way of two separate alphabet organizations. You know, if he would have fought Joe Joyce and potentially beat Joe Joyce, he would have been in a pole position by way of the WBO to challenge the winner of Joshua versus Usyk too. But if you go to Sky, it can't be because you're chasing them. And it can't be because you wanted a Joe Joyce fight. It's clear. You didn't want that.